Hi, my name is Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording, and this is The Machine Plus. And uh, I put out a really silly track the other day called Bees. And uh, I was waiting for someone in the comments to be like, show us how you made it, because I wanted to, and here's that video. So we'll walk through uh, sort of the guts of bees and uh, how it came to be. So I was just fucking around on the machine, and I came across the percussion generator, which is part of its internal drum synths, and I really loved how this just sounded. It was just this really punchy, uh, trappy kind of like sound. And I was like, I'm just going to try uh, playing around with it and um, see what I get. So that's how the first uh, sound came to be. You can see I have a little bit of verb, the maximizer, and a little bit of lo-fi on here. Later on, this gets a bit crazy uh, during the chorus. It gets kind of like nasty. That's all the lo-fi thing there at the end. So just a really cool, cool sound. You know, I started committing to the genre, which uh, includes certain kinds of conveyances, like, um, I don't know, like certain kind of drum sounds. And that's how the first sort of beat came along. So let me find that. Uh, I guess we'll go through the chorus and we'll unmute the drums. So what's going on here? Well, we got an internal kick, you can see, just from the internal drum synth from the kick. There's multiple modes for this. This is the 909 mode with some edits. We have a snare from the internal percussion uh, synthesizers in clap mode with the maximizer afterwards. Nice, really just crisp clap. A hi-hat from the internal, uh, internal mode in silver mode, which is kind of like a classic 808. Another hi-hat. In memory mode, I can't remember exactly what that is. It might be 909, um, but we got two different hi-hats. This is a sample from um, Snare Backdoor. I'm not really sure what that's from. It might be an internal sample or it might be something I loaded on there, but I just needed a really big, crazy-ass sample to go uh, as part of the accent beat. Got a, a little accent snare um, that kind of does some stuff uh, throughout. This is in POW mode, which is uh, sort of this noise snare. Uh, percussion. So again, you can see this is all, with the exception of this, internal stuff. And one of the really cool things about the percussion is this uh, performer mode. So if I go over to um, my envelopes here, uh, machine means I can just press it and it happens. Realistic is a different mode. Oh, come here. Not really sure what realistic is, but performer actually creates a sequence, which is really, really cool. Um, so that comes in every now and then. We got another snare, big ass reverb, a maximizer and limiter. Um, so the way that machine works is that you have sounds which can have chains. You can see that each sound has like a chain of effects afterwards. The groups can have uh, effects. And uh, this one has a maximizer followed by a transient master. What transient master is going to accentuate or de-accentuate attack and sustain of the beat. So I increase the attack of this so it really cuts through in the chorus section when there's so much going on. So that's really, really fun. Another instance of percussion. Uh, this one's dark and this one is uh, higher. And you can see that I have transient master on here to get rid of some of that initial attack. I wanted this to be really smooth and I can take out that completely so it's really smooth, which is dope. So the drums usually came next uh, in this thing. And then um, once I got that, I was like, okay, let me get the bass in there. Um, this was before I knew that this track was going to be called anything or it was going to have any lyrics or anything. So the next thing that came in was the bass. So let's go to the bass channel and unmute it. So the first step was to get that deep that deep sub bass that's part of the genre, um, that's part of the drop that just like saturates the low end. And you can see I'm using the internal bass synth. With the shape really close to zero, it becomes basically uh, almost a, um, oh, let's go back to that. It becomes basically um, a, uh, what do you call it? A sine wave almost. You can see we have some drive up and you can hear that, that drive hitting in there, really nice. So just a really big sound. A little bit of this metaverb here to add some left and right space to it. 
and then the maximizer. The maximizer goes on pretty much everything that I want to really be big, especially drums. Um, that's one of the cool things about the machine, I'd say, is that uh, whereas with the OP-1 and the Deluge, um, I don't have a lot of like, like studio mixing controls over my, uh, sounds with the machine. I do, um, I have a whole suite of, uh, classic, um, EQs and compressors and stuff like that. Classic meaning that like, these are the tools you would reach for to get a mix to sound right. Um, so you can really dial in each sound exactly how you want it, which is uh, really useful in getting like that, that sound that you want. So at this point, um, I said, okay, this is getting big. And I'm especially since I was using that that dark sound. It's kind of a dark, aggressive sound. So I'm like, okay, let's take this up uh, darker. Let's make it more darker and aggressive. So we have two other bass synths here. This first one is like a really angry 303. Really great sound. Uh, so this is, again, bass synth. You can see our shapes up a little bit up um, to, so that we can get to uh, almost a, uh, what do you call it? A 303-ish uh, sound, so it's like a saw wave. Uh, we have a little bit more filter um, stuff going on and some decay, and the drive is all the way up, so we get a big-ass growl. And then I felt like things were hitting pretty well, but I wanted it to be even nastier. So I added this third instance of the bass synth, which is just destroyed. So uh, full decay, full drive, again, very close to the uh, saw wave in here. I added a gate so that this decay eventually just cuts itself off. Otherwise this would ring for a really long time. Lo-fi is taking the resample and bit crush down really low. So it just kind of like fucks the sound up really hard and makes it really glitchy and dirty. Followed by some distortion. Mulholland is a really aggressive distortion model. There's two in here right now. And um, I really like this one. I want things to get crazy. So that's on there now. And then an EQ to take out lows um, because uh, we, our lows are handled by these two other bases that were on here. This is just top end stuff. So altogether, So this all happened in the course of an evening, I believe, all this stuff I was working on. And um, uh, I had hooked up the Proform VE, which uh, is this. See that pedal right there? That, that yellow pedal? One of the things that I've been wanting to do with the machine, uh, since I got to know it a bit better, is um, start recording more vocals into it and doing more vocal work with it because it's basically a way to write songs really fast. So I'm kind of self-conscious about my voice. The Perform VE has been a really, really helpful tool in that. Um, and so after a few beers, I was like, okay, I'm just going to record something really silly into this and see what happens. So uh, I'm going to switch over to the Perform VE mic real quick, and uh, we'll listen to what that sounds like. Mm. Hey, how's it going? So I have three different presets on this. Three different presets for my voice. Each one has a different vibe. And I'm here just recording directly. Now that you've heard what that sounds like. Uh, <laughs> um, so let's go to the vocal channel. Uh, let's see. I believe that is this one. Oh, I probably need to unmute it, huh? All right, there we go. Beast. Beast. So that was the first thing I recorded. Beast. Uh, it, it, it just said it's bees. Um, <laughs> for the reason that it says that, I'm going to turn sampling off real quick. I can, You can hear this through here because I have direct monitor on. So you go to sampling, and I go to, uh, hey, go to here. And I go here, and direct monitor off. There. Now you can't hear that, which is kind of what we want. So so Mutable Instruments, uh, your uh, company came out with um, Beads recently. Uh, Beads is a, a module, your module, um, that is sort of the successor to Clouds, which is a granular processor module that has been in modular forever. It's almost a mem. It's so ubiquitous at this point. Uh, really famous, really, really well thought of. Almost everyone has had one in their rack at some point or one of the clones of it. Um, so Beads came out and it's amazing and I hope to get one, but it's been on my mind quite a bit and um, I don't know why, but like in Discord, we were joking about it and it became Bees instead of Beads. And so Bees were on my mind and then Bees went into here so uh that's that's what happened so at this point i had our our chorus and sometimes that's all you need um so i went to bed and uh, woke up the next morning and was like what have i done 
what, about, what the fuck am I going to do with this loop that uh, is so outside of what I normally do um, as any kind of music? Um, I'm like, I'm going to have to rap over it because that's the only thing that will work to make this happen. Like, it's, And I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'll just do that. <laughs> um, and as a white person, um, I really don't have a lot of things to rap about. Uh, so I decided to rap about your rack module. So I went on the modular grid and I went alphabetical order through module grid and just wrote lyrics based on what I was seeing there. <laughs> So all of this stuff is about modular uh, URAC modules because that's how we do it. So let's take a look at the plugin chain here. Each one of these uh, uh, vocal things has a fair amount of processing um, after the perform VE. We have a gate to cut out noise. We have an EQ to sweeten certain uh, frequencies and cut out certain frequencies. We have a compressor, a limiter. And then I think the whole group has uh, this on it. So I didn't ever use this, but this is dope. So let's check this out. Uh, the perform effects. Uh, I'll show this off real quick. Let me go to a different scene. I'm going to go to verse 2A. Uh, I want to see. How about this one? Okay, cool. So check this out. Let's try that again. It's a really dope stutter effect. I never used it in the uh, thing, um, but I plan to. I really, really like it. So that's what's on the group effect for that. So all the vocals get hit with that. So I had my direction, I had my main sounds, and now it was time to um, record the lyrics. So I recorded each uh, lyric, each verse in with a different preset on the perform VE so that it had a, its own character and uh, followed some pretty basic contrivances when it came to this genre. And that is like, bring it down for the verse, um, build it up and then hit hard for the drop <laughs> as hard as you possibly can. Um, what else do we have in here? Uh, we have some effects. Just some risers and falls and stuff like that. Really, really basic shit. And then we have some one shots, uh, which add a lot of flavor to this. So some of these are from the um, uh, Vengeance sound effect series, which I use quite a bit. So let's dig into one of these and see what's going on. Um, so distortion and metaverb on this. This is a big part of the hook in the chorus. Uh, it looks like it just has a compressor afterwards. So really not a big deal. It's just a sample and you can just, you know, if you find the right sample, just stick it in there and make it work for you. I love that sound. That's my fucking favorite sound of the whole goddamn thing right there. <laughs> This one is a really aggressive kind of dark brass sound that is part uh, that I associate with the genre, and it makes a kind of a big part of like, especially the bridge. That fucking just angry brass sound. It's super cool, and it's got some reverb on it to really have it laid out. This one's also a really cool sound. So I, I really, really like relying on samples to get um, complex uh, engagements with my with my like palette. Um, I plan on making more stuff um, from scratch when I hook this up to my other synths. But at this point, um, it's a lot easier to pull samples in than it is to create sounds from scratch uh, on the internal synths. So I find myself using samples a lot more than I do uh, synths. That's the, uh, what do you call it? The FX group. So let's talk about the different scenes. Here's the entire track right here. We have uh, the intro, or excuse me, we started with the chorus, these two things right here. So my first pattern was sort of the biggest sound the biggest pattern that I could make, because that's kind of how I work generally, is like start at the top and then work back from there. So chorus 1A, chorus 1B with some variation. Here's our verse, which brings it down. Verse 2B, pre-chorus. And then our choruses, we go back into them here. Verse 2A, verse 2B, pre-chorus again, back into the choruses. And then we have a bridge, more aggressive versions of the choruses, an outro and a final end which is just a tag. I actually do that quite a bit. It's just have like a little piece of something right at the end to capitulate the track. So not really that complicated. If we go into our song mode here, uh, you can see that it's just all right there. Like 
not much going on. Um, it's, it's pretty simple. It's just all about what's going on in the patterns. Um, I made uh, a big use of note repeat uh, for my fills, just like I did in the drum and bass track that either is out already or uh, has come out. I don't know. I don't know what order anything exists in my life anymore. Um, but uh, note repeat's pretty dope for, for this kind of stiff. So you can set up in the upper right hand corner here. Values. Including triplet values and you can swap between them really quick. So I've been really having a lot of fun with that. I've been thinking about like, you know, I think, I, you know, my push two can do it, but like Ableton inherently, I don't think you can really do that unless you like, you know, jury rig a, uh, an arpeggiator or something. So it's really nice to have that in there. So I just really followed the rabbit hole with this, made it really silly as possible. Um, but it was also really, really fun. And I learned a lot. This is my first full track on the machine. I loved it. Um, and, uh, I hope that you enjoyed this walkthrough. If you haven't watched all of the video for bees, which is like three minutes long, cause why would you need more bees than that? Uh, check the video link in the description or it's probably up in the corner here. Up there, right there, bees. Beans. Please do check out the playlist if you like machine content. I will be uh, doing a lot more with this, um, just in general, because I love it. Thanks for watching. My name is Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Uh -huh.